Hey folks, uh, good morning. This is Big Mike, Mike Zlatnik, and it's another episode of the Big Mike in Motion show. Walking in my neighborhood here in Brooklyn, New York, uh, on Sunday, November 3rd. Actually just voted this morning. Uh, so, went through the uh, voting process, and uh, no, vo no voter ID in New York. You just ask for your name and your address, and you get the vote. So, uh, I don't know how safe or secure this is. It reminds me um, the uh, good old saying, not that the every vote counts, is that the people who count the vote <laughs> matter. So, it's almost, uh, that's what the feeling is, like in the good old Soviet Union where I grew up. So, it is what it is. Just, you know, not saying anything beyond that. But I wanted to put a few comments um, from some of the recent readings that uh, uh, I, uh, I had and uh, news articles and just a few interesting observations. So we, we've not seen a recession in quite a while, although there's been a, quite a bit of talk of a recession. Where is this recession? What's going on? Why we're not seeing a recession? And uh, we are right before the election. Election is on Tuesday. Uh, although we may not have the results for a few days, maybe even weeks, who knows, right? It's kind of, a, it's got strange and uh, unusual, but we live in the unusual times. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but I wanted to make a couple of interesting comments as I was listening to, um, again, some radio commentary, some uh, reading some uh, articles, as well as uh, looking up some data. A few interesting comments. So recession. Recession typically is well overdue at this point. Uh, we've, heard, heard, we've heard, all heard of the inverted yield curve. Typically, inverted yield curve precedes a recession. And when the yield curve uninverts, goes normal, is when the chances of a recession get pretty high. So from uh, my observation, and I looked back multiple recessionary cycles, and the picture is very, very similar. And I... Uh, I literally was looking at the stuff in the morning before I went to vote. Um, and we'll have the data available for folks to take a look. Uh, but it's pretty, there's a pretty high correlation, although this is an unusual cycle. Uh, COVID is a black swan event, and a lot of things are very, very different this time than uh, in the past. So we don't know. It's been long overdue, and we've not really seen it. The economy has been too resilient. Um, so, uh, but it, it still feels like there's a concept called reversion to the mean, and the mean is the recession is overdue. When you have a period of great expansion sooner or later, you must have a recession. It's inevitable. This is how the world operates and functions. So it feels like that 2025 is the time for, let's call it at least a mild recession. Now, a severe recession is an unlikely scenario. We would have to have a lot of bad things happen in the U.S. for it to, to take place. But again, the data, the uninverted yield curve, and it's steepening gradually, uh, is a uh, likely indication of a recession. A lot of other data points, obviously, are there. Credit card debt, um, car loan defaults. Even I had a conversation with another fund manager who, whose business is to buy uh, defaulted, distressed uh, loans. And residential and he usually buys sort of the call it low to low income maybe not low income housing but let's just call it not high-end mortgages and uh, he's getting better deal flow better pricing but higher volume so the lower income consumer who still owns houses is, is a lot more paycheck to paycheck um, very tight economics for those families and uh, once the uh, unemployment starts picking up, that consumer is, is going to be beaten up and we're probably going to see significant contraction in the consumption. So again, recession at this point, in my view, uh, is pretty likely for 2025. We'll see what happens. Uh, and the reason the recession actually would be not a bad news, it'd be pretty, de pretty decent news in, in my book, uh, is because the Fed would cut faster. So that would help commercial real estate, would help all forms of real estate. So 
the uh, uh, mild recession would mean <coughs> fast reduction from Fed. Also, mild recession doesn't need to be uh, increase unemployment to 10%. It could just mean increase unemployment to, let's just call it 5, 5 5.5%. Those are considered to be levels absolutely uh, not devastating for the economy. So we'll see what happens. Another really interesting um, point was that I was uh, listening to, I think it was Bloomberg uh, Radio or one of those uh, uh, financial channels. And uh, it, it pointed out that Warren Buffett is sitting on a record level of cash, highest of all time. He continues to generate cash. He, he has great businesses. And he's just not, not, not seeing any opportunities to buy. In fact, uh, the, uh, the conversation pointed out he's been a net seller, including Apple stock. He has been a net seller of stocks, even though the stock market is a historic level. Because what's, that's what, what value investors do. They look at valuations. They look at real value versus the market momentum where things are, market could be hot today and recent performance could be great, but on a relative basis, uh, the market could be very over, overpriced. So uh, I had another uh, podcast conversation with another brilliant gentleman. It's a good friend who is sort of a global macro investor. And uh, he pointed out that there are bargains in many other places. And he considers sort of the Magnificent Seven highly overpriced. He says the earnings at the record level, and what's really alarming, are that they are priced to earning ratios at the highest level ever level so what this points out to is that the these stocks are um, set for perfection anything goes wrong any earnings misses or any other uh, volatility the market could go through a significant correction so from his perspective there are much better bargains in other asset classes strategies etc so i go look at what we do day in and day out uh, the opportunities today in lending are sort of better than ever before. Why? Because the banks are tight. Bank credit is, is very, very tight. Banks are lending a lot less because of very tight credit conditions in uh, commercial real estate. And this is uh, one of the reasons for this is uh, high, much higher rates. The rates are creating the, the tight credit conditions because the banks are not getting their previous loans back. So their liquidity strapped. Uh, in order for them to make fresh loan, then they, they, they demand lower risk and higher uh, returns. So when the banks are stepping out, private credit is stepping in, in both primary debt and secondary mass debt. So we see phenomenal opportunities from the point of view that we can act where the banks don't, bank, banks don't want to act, not because these are not good deals, but because they just don't have the liquidity. They don't want to. Uh, loan the cash that they need to keep on their books So and then the regulator is breathing down the throat. In fact, many banks are driving the need for mass debt So what's really interesting is we've uh, financed a few mass debt deals recent deals and the banks are requiring pay downs from the equity owners or requiring setting aside higher interest reserves more interest reserves to pay the bank and they're triggering some kind of covenants under their loans to require that why because they don't have liquidity and they want they, they want the borrowers the owners to bring more cash to make them feel better to have their regulators to give them a break that's what's happening today another interesting new um, file just came across our desk which we are looking to underwrite is where um, we loaned a few years ago in primary debt on a given commercial property and then the property has since been refinanced through a bank loan. But now it, it's got a great tenant lease signed and they need capital to build out uh, for this lease. And guess what? The bank is not giving the money, so they gotta go raise private credit to basically finance the build out with a signed lease. It's, a, it's, it's traditionally a great opportunity for bank loan, but the bank doesn't wanna lend until there's a tenant in the property and they've been paying rent for some amount of time till the rent is seasoned. So, uh, well, it's an opportunity for us 
to come in with a uh, essentially second lien loan and uh, provide a bridge basically six to 12 months most likely to complete the construction it only needs three, three months but then the tenant needs to move in season the loan and then at some point in time with that fully stabilized uh, property the, the property could be sold or refinanced uh, so from that perspective that's what the uh, the purpose of a loan so we see this again and again in greater and greater volume and on a risk-adjusted basis many of these loans just look uh, better than ever and we've seen similar requests on a first in lending front where the banks never really played on a fix and flip space that wasn't their space they always want to fund stabilized properties either owner occupied or rental properties when there's a rental tenant and it's performing so from that perspective the space continues to be safe for private lenders hard money lenders anyway uh, hopefully <laughs> enough of the big mic in motion this morning uh, enjoy your um, enjoy your Sunday I, we're gonna try to release it as soon as possible I hope it comes out today we'll see and uh, voting on Tuesday hopefully we will know who is the next president what the next uh, Congress uh, looks like and local elections obviously uh, on Tuesday have a wonderful day